Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Mathusiasm. Today we're going to look at this amazing problem of number theory. Find the positive integers n so that this is a prime number. First of all, I would like to thank another channel for this really interesting problem. However, I'm going to do it differently because I will show you the most general case. Actually, the previous video only showed a particular value of n. Moreover, there are three tricky parts in the solutions, which are easy to overlook. I will talk about them one by one in a minute. Now, we consider three cases of n. The first one is when n is an even number. Then we move on to n is equal to 1. And we end up with all other odd values of n. To start with, when n is an even number, both n to the power 4 and 4 to the power n are also even. So their sum is always an even number. It has a factor 2, so it is not a prime number. We can also call it a composite number. Straightforward, right? Not really. What about the number 2? It is even and prime. This is the first tricky part of the solution. So we can only say that all even numbers greater than 2 are composite numbers. Is it the case for n to the power 4 plus 4 to the power n? Of course it is. If we put n is equal to 2 into the expression, then it's equal to 32. Because we take the smallest even number for n, therefore this is the minimum value, which is still larger than 2. In other words, for all even numbers n, n to the power 4 plus 4 to the power n is not a prime number. Let's move on to the second part. When n is equal to 1, n to the power 4 plus 4 to the power n is equal to 5 which is a prime number. We get one possible case. So how about other odd values for n? When n is an odd number and n is larger than 1, we let n is equal to 2m plus 1, where m is a positive integer. Now let's factorize n to the power 4 plus 4 to the power n. How to do it? We break down 4 to the power n into 4 times 4 to the power of n minus 1. Then we write this 4 as 2 squared. At the same time, let's put n equals to 2n plus 1 into the index. Simplified it, we get 4 times 2 squared, the whole thing to the power of 2m. But the laws of indices, a to the power p, the whole thing to the power q is equal to a to the power of p times q. If we reverse p and q, we get the same result. So let's reverse the two indices, 2 and 2m. For the first term n to the power 4, we write it as n square, the whole thing square. Why do we have to do this? Because it is in the form of x square plus 4y square. We cannot factorize it directly, but we can change it to a nice form. We add 4xy and subtract 4xy so that the value is the same. Then the first three terms form a perfect square, which is x plus 2y whole square. Let's put x is equal to n square and y is equal to 2 to the power of 2m. Therefore, we get n square plus 2 times 2 to the power of 2m whole square minus 4n square times 2 to the power of 2m. Is this form good enough to proceed? The second term in the bracket can be simplified as 2 to the power of 2m plus 1. Can you see that the last term is also a perfect square? It's actually 2n times 2 to the power m whole square, which can be changed to n times 2 to the power of m plus 1 whole square. So we have a difference of two squares. Because a square minus b square is equal to a plus b times a minus b, therefore we can factorize it as follows. Hey, the proof is completed n to the power 4 plus 4 to the power n is written as a product of two integers. They are the factors, so it is not a prime number. Are you sure? What if one of them is 1? Then we cannot guarantee that n to the power 4 plus 4 to the power n must have other factors. This is the second tricky part of the solutions. So we have to check that the two brackets are both larger than 1. Let's look at the first bracket because it is the sum of three positive terms. Therefore, it should be larger than 1. Now, we come to the second bracket. 
It's not that obvious to see that it must be larger than 1, because we have a negative term here. Let's work out some small values. When m is equal to 1, n is equal to 3. This expression is equal to 5. When m is equal to 2, n is equal to 5, then the expression is equal to 17. Both of them are larger than 1. So far, so good. But it's impossible to check each value of m. We need a general way to do so. What's that? Right, it is the mathematical induction. So what is the statement to prove? Let's focus on the last two terms. Take out the common factor 2 to the power of m plus 1. We have 2 to the power m minus n, which is 2 to the power m minus bracket 2m plus 1. Let's make a conjecture. If this term is positive, then everything looks good. So we let this be our statement p of m for all positive integers m, where m is larger than or equal to 3. You may wonder why we start from m is equal to 3, because if you put m is equal to 1 and 2, then 2 to the power m minus bracket 2m plus 1 is equal to negative 1, which is small than 0. The statement is unfortunately incorrect. It's the third tricky part, but it doesn't matter. We have already proved that the whole term n squared plus 2 to the power of 2m plus 1 minus n times 2 to the power of m plus 1 is larger than 1 for these two values of m. So we're good to go. Let's start with the first case. When m is equal to 3, left-hand side is equal to 1, which is larger than 0. So p of 3 is true. Assume that p of k is true for some positive integers k where k is larger than or equal to 3. That is, 2 to the power k minus bracket 2k plus 1 is larger than 0. When m is equal to k plus 1, consider 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus bracket 2 times k plus 1 plus 1. We change the first term to 2 times 2 to the power k, and the second term is 2k plus 3. By assumption, the green term 2 to the power k is larger than 2k plus 1. So we get rid of the exponential term. Now, it's easy to simplify. We get 2k minus 1. For k being larger than or equal to 3, 2k minus 1 must be larger than 0. Therefore, if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is also true. By principle of mathematical induction, p of m is true for all positive integers m, where m is larger than or equal to 3. Up to here, we have checked that this expression is larger than 1 by two methods. For m is equal to 1 or 2, we used substitution. For m is larger than or equal to 3, we used mathematical induction. In other words, this statement is true for all positive integers m. Go back to the very beginning, we can say that n to the power 4 plus 4 to the power n can be written as a product of two integers. Both of them are larger than 1. It is always a composite number. And this is true for all odd positive integers n, where n is larger than 1. After considering all possibilities, we get that n to the power 4 plus 4 to the power n is prime only when n is equal to 1. We can see the power of logical argument to solve this challenging problem. If you want to know more interesting questions of number theory, please check out the links of the videos and playlists on the screen and in the descriptions below. See you in next video.